So let's get a couple of things out of the way, just like at the top of the, at the top of this episode. Yes, uh, this is Rise of the Tomb Raider, not Tomb Raider. I I recognize the issue of the video because I do have Tomb Raider Definitive Edition sitting on my thing, but I somehow have even less to record there. Like, less footage to record here. At least here I can find things. And stuff. There, like, I don't even have enough of the map unlocked to, like, pretend to hunt things. I have nothing. I'm just gonna run around a lot. And, dude, I'm not gonna have a lot to show in this video, so I'm just gonna be talking about Tomb Raider. The movie. Also, um, another thing we have to kind of, like, get out of the way real quick is that I'm not entirely sure because I haven't finished the original Tomb Raider yet. I have absolutely no idea. Is that, is this hot on his ass? I have absolutely no idea how, uh, how closely related the movie is to the, uh, fuck, what am I thinking of? Um, to the game. So I could just be spoiling fucking everything. Which is something that I acknowledge, but you might not have acknowledged. So. Acknowledge that. So it's not an issue. Um, so yeah. I'm here now. And we're talking about Tomb Raider. So let's talk about Tomb Raider. Um, oh yeah. So I feel like. I kind of have to review this movie in, in two very different scopes. I have to review it as part of the um, the gamer community who hasn't had a good movie to save their fucking life. But then I also have to review it as someone who genuinely reviews movies even though I review them while playing video games and half my thoughts are fucking scared of the shit. This is how I choose to review my movies. Don't judge me. Um. So yeah. So I think as a video game movie, it is a really good time watching the movies, watching the movie, seeing all the references and all the cheeky nods, all the things that, like, are straight up just video game moments put on a on the big screen is fucking amazing, and. Just so much fun to watch and to see how everything goes through. I want, I genuinely want a scene now where you have to outrun, outbike, I mean, a bunch of people because you're the fox. Like, I would love to do that. That's bloody amazing. And I love how it just it shows her intelligence and her creativity. And it's such an early scene, too. And it's amazing. And I love it. It's, and ah, I'm gushing. Um, but yeah, this is a really fun movie and it's a fun time. And it's something that. You almost there, there are times where you, like you almost forget it's a a video game movie and kind of just get brought into this world of uh, B level action movies, which some might think is a slam, but I think uh, there are a lot of good B level action movies that just don't get enough love. There's a like there's a great pool of them. Probably one of my favorites is pretty much anything with Jackie Chan in it. Specifically, um, Who Am I? Which is technically Police Cop 4. But, you know, we didn't get all the other ones, so we just got that one. But, like, it's a great B-level movie. But, as a video game nerd and as someone who loves video games, it it's better. It's so much better. So, I do feel that I am jaded at fuck. Please take that into account. Um... I also haven't finished <laughs> uh, Definitive Edition. It's actually something I want to play on the channel um, in some time. So I haven't finished it. So I don't exactly know how the game ends, but as far as I know, uh, as far as I played through, it's pretty one-to-one -one with the comparisons w with the island, with the treasure, with everything going on with Trinity, and everything kind of the, the movie explores. They're all things and themes that get brought up in movie. And it was so great to not only see a Laura Croft that actually looks like a human and not just a 
glorified sex doll. Sorry, Angel Angelina Jolie. Please don't hate me. Um, but like her boobs in the original Tomb Raider movies cannot be real. I refuse to acknowledge them as real. And if they are, that's a different video. Um, <laughs> it's just a different video entirely. But this movie, like, it gets all the moments you want to get right. The airplane scene, the the fucking, uh, the boat scene where the boat capsizes. Like, all the moments you want them to get right, they get right. But I think that's also one of the biggest problems. That some of the biggest moments are given away in the trailer. Which is disappointing at best. And disappointing at best and depressing at worst. It's like, oh, like... All those wow moments that would have really would have gotten us as fans of the franchise. You've shown us already. You've shown us the moments that, you know, someone who played the game casually would be looking for. Um, even the really, like, messed up kind of gory stuff uh, is in the movie from Laura getting impaled in the opening sequence to her getting impaled in the movie. Well, it isn't one for one, and thank God for that, because in-game Laura gets the shit kicked out of her with that. It is much more realized, and much more, I almost want to say realistic, but that's not quite the right word for it either. But, like, that moments in there, like, a lot of these key uh, game moments get represented in uh, the movie, and it's just amazing. There isn't really... There isn't anything in the movie that is like, oh, wait, why did that happen? Which is something that a lot of these action movies kind of just don't do well. They basically start doing something and then they kind of go off and it's like, oh, and then we're here and now we're here because plot reasons. This movie explores each thing that it kind of goes into. And while some people aren't going to like that, personally, I think with the character of Laura Croft, we're just so... Which is, she owns her headspace, and she's so much in her own head, and she's always thinking the next thing to do. It was perfect for the character, and even though this movie, this, these games and these movies are based off the action, and oh, what crazy things are you going to do? Like, the character Laura Croft is why they became great. It's why when the reboot was announced in the first place, Uncharted got scurred. Um, and this movie really pulls out, <laughs> oh, bless you, I'm keeping that in, because that's just amazing. It really keeps that, eh, of Laura Croft in, it keeps in all of her personality and everything that it does. It's such a highlight of everything that the character we know and love is. <coughs> oh, I'm dying. Okay. I didn't need Laura to kill me. Because I'm dying here. Okay, cool. She shouldn't have said Angelina Jolie just looks like a sex doll. That's the problem, though. Um. Also, where am I? Where am I going? I had a plan. There was a plan to this. Um. But like, the movie does so many of the things I expected to do wrong. Whether it's uh, you know, really capturing the. The cinematic wow moments of the original game, the character of Laura, as us gamers have come to know and love her, all these things I expected them to get horribly wrong because it's a video game movie and why would they get it right, they instead do with a good bit of justice to them and it's something that I wasn't expecting to have such a care for the property that I actually ended up walking away even happier. Than I expected. Based on the trailer, the trailers alone, which I took a couple of peeks at. Um, I knew this game, this movie was gonna be visually good. And it was gonna look the part, but I wanted to know if it's gonna be the part. And as a more casual Tomb Raider fan, I think it does. Now, as a just average moviegoer, I'm not. Entirely sure the reason for loving her is all there. And I'm not entirely sure if 
moviegoers are going to be enthralled with Laura as the gaming community is. Gaming community. I have an accent. I'm sorry. Um, you know, and I think that that's something that this opening weekend would definitely show. And I'm excited to see where that goes. Because this series definitely has room to grow and it definitely has places to go and do. It's just a matter of will the general public allow it to do these things and allow it to continue to grow and move and develop? Or will this be Laura's one and only outing? Which I hope it's not. I hope we do get more. Uh, the people behind Tomato hope for more with the ending, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But more is definitely wanted and definitely anticipated for. So we'll see how that goes, all in all. Now, the movie circles around Laura having to come to grips with her dad is hella dead. Like, dead for five years, dead. And that's kind of hard for Laura to come to grips with. So she's kind of been putting off things that she's... Supposed to have done much, much earlier in life and just all these little things that need to be done that just haven't gotten done for lack of a better reason. Um, and the movie goes into it as well. She doesn't feel like she's ready to accept that and how can you ask someone to accept the death of their father and it, it's understandable why she doesn't want to do this. It, it comes, it's much more of a showing of the connection, the psychological uh, kind of thing is going on in the movie. That even though, yes, they provide motivation and reason, they, they're not the main focuses of the film. But based off the first half hour, you think it would be. And it kind of gives you the impression that this is going to be a movie that delves much more into the psychology of what everything means versus just... These characters coming to life. Um, and you can make the argument that it is a much more psychologically driven uh, film between the hypothetical trolley tests and all these other things that kind of um, are going on. You can definitely make the argument. I won't. Just for reasons. But the argument is there and it is pretty valid uh, for the most part anyway. Um... But all in all, I think that as a movie that if I saw it on, when I see it on Redbox, I'm definitely going to rent it. I, I want to see the movie again. I want to see if there are things that I missed that I can kind of re-pick up on and re-take uh, into consideration. Because that's always just that's always fun. When you get a movie you enjoy and you kind of just want to watch the game, like, hey, did I, did I miss things? Like, I want to know if I missed things. And this is definitely one of those movies that I can see missing things. And I can see, like, oh, what well, did you see this? And did you see this? Be just because of the nature of the film itself. So I do kind of want to go through and see um, all the things that I missed. And what did I miss? And when did I miss them? And I, I kind of want to go through that with this movie, which is real. Um, so that alone does tells you that I thought that it was a really fun movie. Uh, I don't know what will. But again, I am biased. I am a gamer and I love this character getting the love she deserves from the more general audience. Um, from a more general audience and I'm happy that she's getting it. But as a just normal moviegoer, it... There's not as much here as I would like. I, I want more action, I want more reasons, I want more things to happen. It's writing a very fine line of, this is what I, exactly what I want and not enough. So, I think as a normal movie goer, you're going to have a good time. You're going to want more at times where it's just like, no, we have to explain what's going on. We have to review this and that here because of this and, the, and, this and that reasons and... Unless you've bought into the character already, and oh, this is how she thinks, and we're getting to see this because we are Laura, Laura. we are with Laura, and that's why we're seeing all this, because we have to understand how she thinks, and all this other stuff. I don't really 
know if audiences are going to be into that. It's definitely a stylized choice that I don't think this movie could really exist without because it it is Laura, but it might be a turn off for the general public, which is understandable. Um, you don't get to make big decisions and bold decisions without turning off a couple of people. Um, it's almost the nature of the beast in that kind of way. But all in all, I thought it was a really fun movie. I thought it was a movie that I look forward to seeing more about and learning more about and seeing more of what was going on in this world. I want to see where they take it, if they, how far they do want to push the envelope and how far things want to go. Especially with where this game, Rise of the Tomb Raider and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which comes out later this year, supposedly, according if you believe the leaks. Um, I want to see where these games take it. I want to see where these games go and where this series as a movie can also grow and develop and what risks they're willing to take to get us there. I think that one of the things that really made uh, the games as amazing as they were is that, no, this is, especially um, with the more recent games, in my opinion, being my first real grips with the franchise, being like, no, these are the decisions we're making and you're either going to hop on board or you're going to hop off. And that's more or less up to you. And I really love that about this series. And I hope the movies kind of take that aspect into it. Now, I do kind of want to go into some spoilers really quick, mainly because I do have a couple of main questions that I feel, um, I don't know, that, that I want to talk about. So, if you haven't seen the movie or any plan to, please dip out now and I'll see you then. If you're still here, you don't give a fuck about spoilers or you've already seen it and want my full opinion. And I do still agree with it being a good movie. And I do still agree with it being a movie that I want to kind of see. I want to watch again. I want to see what I missed. However, I do want to add this massive caveats of... I just want to see some of these action sequences again. Because there are some of them that are a lot of fun and a really good time. And there are some of them that are straight up uh, fucking... Like, epileptic shock inducing seizure driven moments where, like, oh, I guess I didn't need anything today. I'm good. This is where I'm at. Which is not something you really want. So, why am I talking about it here? Well, it's because it's some of those bigger moments that we talked about earlier. And it's. And it's used for phrasing and for f not phrasing, but it's used for framing and showing what uh, chaos there is and these type of things. And it even goes into the romantic relationships of like of Laura and this dude whose name I forgot because I forgot it because he is he is important to the movie, but he's not in the movie enough for me to be like, oh yeah, that guy. Um. <laughs> Which, you know, take as you will. Um, it's just, I don't know. There are times in this movie where I feel like he's super important and it's like, oh, right. Oh, we have this really cool character we want to show you and we want to tell you about. And then it's like, oh, wait. What? We have another dude? We have another hero in this movie besides Laura? Yeah, let's get him back here real quick. Let, let him do a thing. And then he does a thing. He's like, oh, okay, we're good. Everyone's good now. I just walked through fire. That's terrifying. Um, but the ending of the movie comes where they find the death goddess, and you get a quick flashback of everything. And she and Laura figures out that she's not a death goddess. She is someone with a disease that has voluntarily sacrificed herself for the good of many. And it's this really noble moment, and this moment was like, oh, that's really cool. And I'm glad that we figured this out. I'm glad that, like, we can set the record straight and all this other shit. And then it immediately is forgotten for the fact that she has this disease that can turn people into zombies? But, like, not zombies, but, like, zombies? 
It, it's a bit confusing. It gets a bit confusing what the fuck these things are. Especially because they really only show up for the last, like, maybe 20 minutes of the film. And we only see one of them. So we don't really know what the fuck this thing is. Just to add to the what of it all. Um... <laughs> so, I, I feel like this movie could have very easily just been like, yeah, and it kills people. It was just an instant tomb, uh, tomb raider, uh, not tomb raider, uh, fucking Ark of the Covenant type death, and it's gross, and it's something you don't want, and it's a big enough problem. Uh, but then the dude kind of like half comes back to life to kill things, and it's like, I, I'm very confused. I'm very confused by what you're trying to tell me this disease is. Um, can, can you can you forward me the details on that one? Because I'm a bit lost. So this that then it, it comes up to be like everything's about family and it's this big fast uh, in the furious moment, which is not a good comparison by anyone's standpoints. Um, okay, that's what it was. I was so confused by what I was looking for. Um, that's not what I was looking for. So that's this core moment thing, and it's just like, oh, okay, I I guess not what I, not the plan, but sure, we'll we'll do that. That'll that'll be a thing we can do. Um, and I don't know. It feels like for the world they were creating, it feels so almost out in the field that I feel. I feel like it belongs in a different movie, um, which is hard to say, because like everything else was kind of going on this path of, oh, okay, science is the only thing that matters, there is no magic, there is no magic, there's nothing magical about this, fuck magic, and then it's like, but here's a zombie creature thing, it's like, what? I, what? I, what? I don't understand where the zombie thing come from. We have to explain the zombie thing. Oh, well, it's a disease that eats your brain and your face, but then lets you come back as a zombie thing? It, like, I don't understand it. And I feel like, for especially for most normal moviegoers, like, not getting this is just a thing that video game, uh, treasure hunting video games tend to do, just be like, oh, and now this is a mythical beast that you have to fight. I feel like it's going to be really out of the field and something that, like, they might not be ready for. They're not, they may not be ready for the full weird that um, video games often take us and go that we've kind of become accustomed to. And I'm, I'm worried that that's going to be, like, those weird things like that are going to be the things that you now stop more moviegoers from seeing the film. It's like, I, I don't know what this ending was about, but I liked it. Um, but then, post that, with the exception of the final uh, scene, which is something that's straight from the games, it it kind of feels predictable in a way. It's like, oh, well, we, we came here to look for the dead dad, and the dad's alive, so naturally, we have to leave this island with a dead dad. That's the only way it can go. And then she becomes a Tomb Raider and everything is hunky-dory once more. But it, it feels like from the beginning of this movie, it's like, oh, well, where else, where else was this going to go? Like, if you can tell me another direction this movie might have gone, maybe I'll take the, off the predictable hits. But I do kind of feel that for most moviegoers, it's going to be a, a bit predictable in the fact of... It's a dead dad. We're here for so let's get a, let's pick up a dead dad. And the amount of times the dad specifically is thrown into uh, just in trouble, into chaos, and into mortal danger versus any other character, it it feels just a very Hollywood thing to do, for lack of a better term, I guess. Um, but other than that, other than it being debatably predictable. And I think if you're if you're thinking about it, you you might try to get that out of it. But um, I watch too many movies and I play too many games to know how storytelling works. So that's why I picked up on it. But um, 
really that's all I have to say. I'm sorry the footage was absolutely boring as fuck to watch. I hope my smooth, rough, raspy ass voice gave you something interesting to listen to. And my name is Insane Raven. That was my review on Tomb Raider. A very solid B level action movie. Which maybe that's what they wanted to make. Maybe it wasn't. But I s- definitely a superb uh, video game movie. If you want to think about it like that. Um, but all in all, we can get better with video game movies. We should always try to get better. And um, that's really about it. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening to me ramble about Tomb Raider. <laughs> And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.